Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sam, I hope you're doing really well. And on this channel, I like to talk about all things film, Blu-ray and physical media collecting. So this is part three of my complete boutique Blu-ray collection uh, video. I've had to split it into three parts because the video is so long. So this is part three. If you've not seen part one or two yet, I'll leave links in the description below so you can start from the beginning. And yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. moving down to some Eureka titles here. So a lot of these were Eurekas I haven't watched. Um, some of these I picked up because they were out of print and I managed to find really good prices for them online, like on eBay and things. But yeah, one of the greatest ever silent films by F.W. Manel. Mad Detective uh, by Johnny Tu and Y.K. Fai. This is a really wacky Hong Kong uh, film. And uh, yeah, this is a bizarre one. This is out of print now, and it's, I'm not sure how much it's going for, but yeah, this, in all form, I'm all, if I'm honest, this is something that I don't think I'm going to rewatch anytime soon, even though I had a good time with it. Um, it's really difficult because I've got like the first 10 spines or 11 spines here, and more, uh, quite a few of these are out of print, and I don't want to break up the set, but I really need to be brutal with myself and just like, um, am I keeping it for the aesthetic of having nice spine numbers? I mean, is that what I'm going for? Uh, it's all personal preference, but I probably will per per pass on this at some point. So, And we have um, the amazing Tokyo Sonata by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. Different type of film for him. It's more of a, like a uh, low-key drama, family drama film. But this is amazing, uh, very emotional particularly towards the end. Really love this one. I'd definitely revisit it. This is quite hard to get hold of now. This is a Jean-Luc Godard film and Femme Marie. Um, yeah, I've not seen it, but it's uh, out of print. For All Mankind, film by Al Reinhardt about the moon landing. La Planète Sauvage, uh, also known as the Fantastic Planet. Soul Power, City Girl by F.W. Manel. M, Fritz Lang, one of the greatest films ever made. Uh, yeah, awesome, awesome German film. Profound Desires of the Gods by Shohei Imamura, one great Japanese filmmaker. Again by Imamura, Vengeance is Mine. Fritz Lang's Incredible Metropolis, one of the crowning achievements of the silent era. Le Amish, this is a Michelangelo Antonioni film. Coeur Fidel, Jean Epstein, Harry Curie. I used to have the uh, Criterion edition of this, but I sold it and I've got the Eureka edition now. So I've not actually opened this one, but this is uh, one of the greatest Japanese films ever made. Silent Running by Douglas Trumbull. I got this uh, for Christmas. I've not watched it yet. The Ballad of Naru Nariyama by Shohei Imamura. Touch of Evil, Awesome Wells film. Two Lane Blacktop. The, Salon the Silence de la Mer. This is an incredible film. Punishment Park by Peter Watkins. It's like a pseudo documentary, almost like mockumentary type filmmaking, except there's no comedy involved in it. Um, very thought-provoking, um, radical cinema, in my opinion. Absolutely incredible stuff, and one that will definitely make my curation at some point. Cleopatra uh, by Cecil B. DeMille. Ruggles of Red Gap. I think this is out of print as well. Oedipus Rex. Uh, Paolo, Pia Paolo Pasolini, very controversial filmmaker. Um, I've picked up a few of his films because I do own Salo, uh, on the Criterion uh, edition. I've not managed to muster up the courage to watch that one yet, and I wanted to sort of ease myself into his filmmaking, so I picked this one up, and I've heard, heard it's really good, so. Rumblefish by uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Das Testament des Dr. Mabuse. I apologize about pronunciation here. Uh, it's not my strongest suit. Double Indemnity, one of the greatest film noirs ever made. Ah, oh, 
The Lost Weekend by Billy Wilder. Now this, I watched this in November because of Noir Vember, um, it being on some like noir lists. And I don't really think this is a film noir, to be honest. Uh, I didn't find much in it that was reminiscent of the genre or any tropes in the genre. But what I will say is that this is probably my second favourite Billy Wilder film after... Um, Oh, what's it called? Sunset Boulevard. My mind went blank there for a second. But yeah, this is such a great film. A really great performance by Ray Milland. And deals with um, some dark subject matter for the time. This came out in 1945? 1945, yeah. And it deals with like alcoholism and stuff. And I, I, I love this film. And it will be entering my curation at some point. Uh, another Fritz Lang joint, Die Nibelungen. Uh, I think this film is like stupidly long. 282 minutes long. So yeah, that's going to be a... Probably watched over a few sittings. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I love everything I've seen by Fritz Lang. So hopefully this follows suit. Blue Angel. Uh, I picked this up because um, I, earlier on in the video I showed off the Marlena... Dietrich and Bo Joseph von Sternberg box set from Indicator, which I absolutely adore. So I basically wanted to discover more, <laughs> more Dietrich films, basically. And uh, Indicator, um, Indicator, Eureka have this one. Um, so I'll watch it at some point. Onibaba. The Murderer Lives at 21 by Henri-Georges Clouseau. Simon Killer. Nosferatu, incredible film. Computer Chess. This is a really interesting sort of independent film set, uh, shot in black and white uh, on a really low budget camera, like from the 60s to make it look like it's from the 60s. Um, aesthetically really interesting. Um, yeah. Faust. Ace in the Hole. Steelbook edition of The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, one of the earliest uh, horror films. Uh, silent picture, really, really, really good. Expressionistic German film. Dragon Inn. Um, kind of a bit obsessed with King Who at the moment, um, although I don't have many of his films, but I've just been reading a lot about his career, and I love his style of Wuxia martial arts films. I love the sound design in them, and the choreography, and just the music and stuff. It's just... Something I'm really enjoying at the moment, and uh, yeah, really like this one. And another King Who film, many regard as his best, uh, Touch of Zen. This is like a three hour epic, <laughs> really good though. Uh, this is a contender for the best documentary ever made, Man in the Movie Camera. It's a Soviet film from the 20s that sort of like documents everyday life in Russia. And it's uh, it's something to behold. Uh, there's a reason why this is like studied at film school and stuff for people. Um, and yeah, I, I really love this. Paths of Glory by the one and only Stanley Kubrick. Cover Girl. This is a really, really great sort of musical uh, film from Charles the Door. Uh, sort of... Uh, Technicolor film, so the colours absolutely pop. We need more 4K restorations of Technicolor films. Laura, amazing, amazing film noir. Human Desire, another film noir film. Woman in the Window, film noir. This is a recent pickup. Um, come back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. Uh, Robert Altman film, basically why I picked it up. And the concepts sound really interesting, so. The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith. Der Golem. This is a really good uh, expressionistic silent film from 1915. Did this come out in 1915? No, 1920. Uh, why I said 1915 is because this film has been remade three times from the year like 1915 to 1920. <laughs> so even back then they were remaking films. And uh, I think this is the last edition of the film that they made. And it's, it's just... Superb, really love it. Not seen this yet, but it's The Thousand Eyes of Dr. Mabusi, Fritz Lang's final film. Crisscross. A Foreign Affair, starring Marlene Dietrich. That's why I got it. 
uh, Bela Lugosi uh, in the adaptation of a bunch of Edgar Allan Poe films, uh, Murders in the Rue Morgue, uh, The Black Cat and the Raven. I actually think the Murders in the Rue Morgue is the best one from the bunch here. Um, really, really enjoyed that one. That's one I'm likely going to revisit. The Black Cat was okay and The Raven was okay, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll keep them all because it's all in the whole set together. But yeah, The Murders in the Rue Morgue is, is definitely the one I enjoyed the most here. Uh, the Man Who Laughs, a uh, very influential character for uh, the Joker. Five Grades to Cairo, Made in Hong Kong, a film by Fruit Chan. Uh, double feature, Ishio Honda, uh, The H-Man and Battle in Outer Space. I really need to put this in my player soon. I bought this with the uh, the idea of watching it as soon as I got it because I was really interested in Japanese science fiction films from the 50s and then I never watched it but um, I, I, I am what, interested in picking this one up, uh, watching this one, sorry. Waxworks, early sort of horror film from Paul Lenny. Oh, and that's the end of the, the Eureka titles. Uh, let's see what's down here, shall we? Oh, let's look at some Criterions. So now we'll just look at my Criterion collection titles that I have. So we have, let's sit on the floor, shall we? Let's get a bit closer to the action. Oh, I'm getting too old for this. Right, so we have the incredible, oh, these are back to front. Uh, the Seven Samurai by Akira Kurosawa. This is my edition of Salo that I picked up on sale when I was in the States. And I've probably had this on my shelf for about two years now and I've still not watched it mainly because I think I really really need to be in the right headspace to watch this film will I ever be in the right headspace to watch this film I don't know but it's there just in case uh, I know Martin Scorsese really rates this film and says it has a lot of artistic merit and it's very important uh, but I know that most people who watch this think it's a pile of trash or it's just so unbearably brutal that uh, there's no reason to ever re-watch it, so why would you want to own it? But I'll make up my own mind regarding that one. Andrei Rublev, incredible, incredible um, Andrei Tarkovsky film. Monterey Pop Festival, really fun. I've revisited this a few times because the music performances are really good in it. It's got some really cool people like Jimi Hendrix, Otis Redding, Simon Garfunkel, etc., etc. So. Um, this is something I've put in the player a few times just to, just to have some cool music on in the background. So, Really cool set of the BRD trilogy from Raina Werner Fassbinder, The Marriage of Maria Braun, or Brown, I never know how to pronounce that. Veronica Voss and Lola. Fanny and Alexander, one of um, Ingmar Bergman's best films in my opinion. Dazed and Confused, this is a curation definite at some point in the future um i love pretty much everything that link has done that i've seen at least and uh this is no exception such a good hangout movie ishiro honda's godzilla the original the classic oh this is such an incredible film this is a recent watch for me uh this is paul schrader's uh mishima a life in four chapters and uh, yeah, this is such a garish cover for this film, but I kind of love it at the same time. It's just like gold and foil and uh, so good. But yeah, the film itself is, uh, is absolutely incredible. Repo Man, really great film by Alex Cox. Sorry, the battery died. <laughs> so I had to charge my phone, had to charge my camera for a little bit before I carried on. So uh, I think I left off with the Repo Man. And then next up we have a uh, great stop animation film from Wes Anderson, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Persona, one of my very favorite films of all time by Ingmar Bergman. Another one of my favorite films of all time, Itu Mama Tambien by Alfonso Cuaron. Eraserhead. I still haven't opened this edition even though I have seen this film a bunch of times. David Lynch is my favourite director ever and uh, I really really love his debut feature. It was a labour of love. I think it took him like five years to make this and it was all self-funded and stuff and yeah amazing amazing film. Uh, oh, This is Moonrise Kingdom. 
don't think you can read with a can't read it, but yeah, this is Moonrise, King Moonrise Kingdom from Wes Anderson. Such a great, great film. Uh, Doctor Strange Love by Kubrick. Still haven't opened this edition, but I love Kubrick. He's also one of my favourite directors of all time. Fire Walk with Me, Twin Peaks. Underrated, a misunderstood film. Um, yeah, incredible, incredible performance by. Uh, oh my god, I'm really bad at remembering people's names Cheryl Lee is her name uh, in the central lead as Laura Palmer and yeah I I adore that film Night of the Living Dead George A. Romero classic Sex Lies and Videotape my favorite film from 1989 The Tree of Life from 2011 and my favorite Terrence Malick film Blue Velvet David Lynch again Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Very interesting musical film. I think I need to re-watch this one again before I decide whether I want to keep it. There were some really cool musical numbers in it. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I think I'll re-watch it before I decide whether I want to part with that one. Uh, Roma. Still haven't opened this one, but I have seen this film like three times because it's on Netflix. Absolutely beautiful film. Very much a... Or almost autobiographical film from Alfonso Cuaron, a love letter to like his a maid, or yeah, the sort of person who basically helps raise him in his family home, and it's it's absolutely gorgeous. Marriage Story. This is another one of the Netflix collaborations between uh, Criterion and Netflix. A really really good Noah Baumbach film. Potentially my favorite trilogy of all time, the Before trilogy by Richard Linklater. Star. So this has Before Sunset, Before Sunrise, and Before s Midnight. Uh, and my favourite one is the one in the middle, which is really short. It's like an hour and 10 minutes long, hour and 15 minutes long. Um, but it's just absolutely amazing. These films are basically just like feature-length conversations between two people discussing all sorts of things about their lives and uh, social commentaries and things. It's just uh, amazing, amazing filmmaking. Alfred Hitchcock's classic The Lady Vanishes. Ooh. Naked Kiss by Samuel Fuller. The Red Shoes. Taste of Cherry. Rushmore, potentially my favourite Wes Anderson film. Diabolique, incredible, incredible Henri Georges Clouseau film. L'Aventura. Playtime, really fun film by Jacques Tati. Maybe a bit long. Not that I have a problem with long films, but I do feel like some of it w was a little filler. Um, but there's this, like a 40, 45 minute scene set in a uh, restaurant, uh, sort of like in the second act or into the third act of the film. And it is utter cinematic joy and worth watching just for that one long extended scene. It's just so, so good. Haxon. Incredible silent film. Like, if you're into horror at all, you need to see this film. It is incredible. Sisters, Brian De Palma film. Uh, interesting. I, I like this one, but this might find its way uh, into my purge section of my video series at some point. Grey Gardens. Really, really good documentary. Rebecca. Now, this is a contender for my favourite Alfred Hitchcock film. Uh, covered this on my podcast um, that I did with uh, Elliot Cohen, um, where we paired this with uh, Paul Thomas Anderson's The Phantom Thread. Um, so yeah, that was fun, and I, I just love this film so much. Uh, the Cranes Are Flying, In the Mood for Love, One Car Y. Now this is seeing a restoration in a big box set that's coming out at some point this year. Um, very interesting um, restoration techniques or ways that they've um, restored the film. It's changed the colour palettes in some ways. So I'm really interested to see what the general consensus about those films are when they come out. Because I've watched this film a couple of times and I will notice a difference in, in the tone and the colour scheme if it's altered too much. And... This is so rich in colour and it's so beautiful that I don't really want it to be changed, even if it's the director's artistic vision for the, the, the version that's coming out soon. Like this, been, this version has been out for so long and so many people have seen it and grown to love it that 
this is the version that they like and so I'd just like to see a more like a 4k version of this one basically so we'll see um, the jury's still out on that one yet traffic not my favorite Soderbergh film I need to revisit this before I decide whether I want to part with it or not but yeah the Royal Tenenbaums another great Wes Anderson film Solaris by the legendary Andre Tarkovsky incredible film really good pairing with 2001 Space Odyssey by Kubrick and Berto D this left me an emotional wreck at the end of this one really good um, uh, ne Italian neo-realistic uh, film about a old gentleman called Umberto and him trying to basically care for himself and his dog uh, in sort of post-war Italy when the youth have basically forgotten about the older generations very sad very moving film The Life Aquatic Hoop Dreams love 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 this film I'm a big basketball fan and yeah this is an extremely good documentary about a bunch of uh, or two kids who are trying to make it into the NBA and it follows them from like young high school age until they go to college sort of thing really really good but it also follows like their family and stuff so if you're not into sports it it's not just about sports it's also about like the social situation about where they're growing up and uh, what their families are going through and stuff so it's fantastic yee yeah, yee yeah. uh, this is one of the best films I've ever seen I only really recently watched this last year for the first time it's by Edward Yang and it's an absolute masterpiece very good sort of family drama uh, saga film from um, Taiwan really 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 good this is a recent pickup this only came out in the UK recently but it's a, meant to be a really interesting documentary Ivan's Childhood, Andrei Tarkovsky, one of my favourite films of all time, The Ice Storm by Ang Lee. Uh, In the Realm of the Senses, not too sure what to make of this one. Um, extremely ex uh, explicit film from Japan from 1976. Um, yeah, may may seem uh, a purge at some point. Last Days of Disco, this is a fun film from Whit Stillman. Oh, next shelf of Criterions. Next shelf of Criterions, uh, we have Paris, Texas. Incredible film. Uh, only watched this one again uh, for the first time last year uh, by Wim, Wen Wim Wenders, starring the legendary um, Harry Dean Stanton. And yeah, this this could see itself making its way into my top 10 films of all time with a few more viewings. Uh, Crumb by Terry Zweigoff is a documentary about um, this uh, cartoonist. Thin Red Line, Terence Malick film, amazing. Uh, the Batshit Crazy film from uh, Nobuhiko Obayashi. It's House or Houseu is the Ita um, Italian <laughs> Japanese pronunciation of the film. This is a crazy film. Um, I'm sure everyone watching this is, has some uh, knowledge about what this film is like. But yeah, just go check out the trailer for it on YouTube if you've never seen this film uh, and that will give you everything you need to know whether this is something you should check out or not. Antichrist by Lars von Trier, very controversial uh, Marmite type director. Not everyone, in fact not a lot of people I know really enjoy Lars von Trier films. I guess I really uh, find his sense of melancholy um, attractive somehow i mean this is very difficult to watch in places this film but uh yeah Lars von Trier it seems like a very troubled individual but i do think that his films are very interesting and uh, they are ones that i will rewatch. legendary film from charles chaplin charlie chaplin modern times love 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 the great dictator insignificance really interesting nick rove film secret sunshine the Phantom Carriage, legendary uh, silent film, 12 Angry Men, designed for living. This is actually one that I will probably part with. Um, yeah, by Ernst Lubitsch, and it's like a pre-code sort of sex comedy type film. Um, yeah, I th this one didn't really strike me that much. Um, I was really looking forward to watching it before I saw it, but um, yeah, I'll probably part with this one at some point. Bel du Jour, an incredible film by Louis Buñuel. Uh, yeah, love that one. Tiny Furniture. Uh, I know Lena Dunham is very um, 
hit or miss personality and uh, um, I quite enjoyed the, f the TV series Girls um, although I do think it had some problems to particularly in its last few seasons but um, this is a very inspirational film in terms of making a film on a, on a budget and just doing what you want to do and telling telling a personal story and stuff and I quite enjoy this one quite a lot. Being John Malkovich crazy film uh, really funny in places actually Certified copy of Askira Stami, slowly becoming, quickly I should probably say, becoming one of my favourite film directors. I just think I need to see a few more of his uh, his output and it might cement my feelings about him. Um, but yeah, such an interesting film. Uh, really one you have to pay attention to because uh, of how the film narrative progresses, but it's really, really good. Gold Rush, incredible silent film, Charlie Chaplin. Uh, Rosemary's Baby by Roman Polanski, one of the greatest horror films ever made in my opinion. Uh, such a great slow burn, demonic <laughs> film. Uh, next up, Ministry of Fear. This is a really underrated Fritz Lang film in my opinion. 1944, uh, sort of mystery, noir -y type film. Really, really good. Terence Malick's Badlands. Safety Last, not watched this one yet, but... Stars the always hilarious Harold Lloyd, City Lights. This is an incredible film. Um, love, love, love this film. Five stars all the way. Uh, Michelangelo Antonioni's La Notte. All that jazz. Love this film. Bob Boss, Roy Schneider. It's a film about filmmaking, which is something that I think is a really interesting uh, thing to sort of have as a theme. La Dolce Vita, Federico Fellini film. Um, really love this one. I think it's slightly too long. It could have been like 20 minutes shorter, half an hour shorter. I think this is like nearly three hours long. Yeah, it's 174 minutes. Um, but it looks gorgeous. It has a lot of really interesting themes and things to say. Federico, Federico Fellini is a great, great filmmaker. But yeah, this this one is something I would definitely rewatch. But it, it's not without its flaws, in my opinion. Thin Blue Line by Errol Morris. This was a really good documentary. Um, sort of almost like the origins of the true crime documentaries that are basically seeing widespread um, appeal on things like Netflix and things like that these days. Um, but I don't think there's much merit in re-watching this unless you're unless you want to become like a documentary filmmaker and then you could basically study this to see how it should be done. Um, but yeah, this is probably be something I'll purge from my collection at some point. Speedy. Love this Harold Lloyd silent comedy. Really good fun. Gilda. This was the first Criterion I ever picked up. Um, it stars the gorgeous Rita Hayworth and it is uh, incredible. Uh, love, love, love Gilda. Amazing film. Love the pink spine on here as well. The Kid. Charlie Chaplin. Uh, this film turned 100 a few days ago as of recording this video and that is crazy to think about that this film is over 100 years old now. Crazy stuff but yeah this is good. This is a really short film as well. It's like 53 minutes long so really good for rewatchability. Brighter Summer Day by Edward Yang. Boy oh boy this was an uh, incredible film, a really really long film, I had to watch it in two sittings, it's 236 minutes long, uh, it's just short of four hours, um, but I need more Edward Yang in my life, he, I've only seen the two films that Criterion have put out, Yee Yee Ye and Bright Summer Day here, um, so yeah I'm really interested to see what the rest of his uh, filmography is like, so really really good stuff, not something I'm going to watch again uh, on the regular but I could see myself putting this one on like say every five years or so mainly due to just the length of the film not due to me not wanting to enjoy it or put it back on again because it is just a spectacular masterclass in in filmmaking but yeah the the runtime is something that would put me off re-watching it so regularly because I could get two films watched depending on how long maybe three films watching the time it takes to watch this one but really really good stuff Punch Drunk Love, really great Paul Thomas Anderson film. Squid and the Whale, possibly my favourite Noah Baumbach film. His Girl Friday. Oh my god, I love this film. It's trash, it's 
garbage it's amazing <laughs> i love it john waters is a really interesting filmmaker and i'm scared to watch the rest of his filmography because this is the only one of his that i've seen um i do own a couple more that i got for christmas that i haven't watched yet but multiple maniacs ghost world love this terry zweigoff film really good sort of like coming of age film has a really great performance from um steve buscemi in it and yeah i love it stalker what can I say about Stalker? Andre Tarkovsky, it's one of his best films. It's one of my favorite films of all time. It's very slow cinema um, and it's not for everyone. I mean, I, I'm not necessarily recommend this to people, although I do think it's a masterpiece, but um, I'd have to know more about what your, your tastes and what you enjoy. But for me, this is something that I I would have to 100% have on my shelf. I can't not not have not have this in my collection. So it will be making my curation at some point. The Piano Teacher, very very difficult watch from um, Mikhail Haneke, really interesting filmmaker. Um, but yeah, it has an incredible lead performance from Isabelle Huppert, and uh, yeah, it's a really really good film. David Lynch, The Art Life, documentary about his painting, not his films, which is good. Um, Female Trouble, another John Waters film I haven't seen yet. I got this for Christmas. And uh, yeah, I'm scared to watch it. <laughs> Detour, this is my favourite film noir. Love the restoration work that's been put in on this film from the Film Foundation. And uh, yeah, really, really solid film. Funny Games. Uh, I'm, I might study this film at some point. I'm doing a module on my film studies class uh, course about uh, screen violence and uh, this is one of the first things that came to mind and how it subverts like expectations about what films, violent films do and how uh, audiences consume them and stuff. So I uh, really, really rate this film. Clute, another John Waters film, Polyester. I think this is more of like a melodrama. Cold War, great, great film. Destry Rides Again, this is a recent pickup, but I've not watched that one yet. Same goes for the cameraman, Buster Keaton. Portrait of Lady on Fire, probably the best film of 2019. And uh, yeah, in terms of its cinematography, it's one of the most amazing, gorgeously photographed films of all time, in my opinion. And I know I'm not the only one uh, who thinks that. Come and See, uh, possibly the greatest war film ever made. Absolutely harrowing. Uh, you had depictions of the atrocities that happened during the Second World War and the lead performance by this uh, young boy here is up there in the, in the rankings of the best of all time. It's just incredible stuff. Uh, Beau Travail, Claire Denis film, really intrigued by this. I've seen a lot of other Claire Denis films um, but never this one, but yeah. Do the right thing. Shame to say I've never seen this Spike Lee joint. Um, I've heard it's meant to be his best, but my favourite that I've seen by him is uh, 25th Hour, which I really hope gets like a, a Blu-ray um, uh, treatment from the Criterion at some point, because I think it would fit really well in with, the, with what they'd like to do. A really cool box set here by Jacques Demi. Um, has a lot of really fun films, with the highlight being the umbrella, Umbrellas of Cherbourg. Uh, really great stuff. Really, almost, it's really, he's basically made films to try and make you cry. He, like, that was his aim, like, and uh, yeah, from the two films in this set that I have seen, um, he, he achieved that, so. Uh, last, almost at the end of this video. Oh my God, this is going to take a lot of editing. We have a bunch of films from Third Windows. I'm so low on the floor, I can't really pick these out. But we have one cut of The Dead here, uh, which is possibly the best zombie film I've seen since Shaun of the Dead. Uh, go into watching this one not knowing anything about it, basically, which is sometimes a hard sell because people like to watch trailers or like to know a bit about the plot before they see it. But it really will ruin your experience if you watch this knowing stuff going into it. But incredible then we have one of my other favorite filmmakers um shinya sukamoto uh this is a three film box set uh, gemini tetsuo is one of the best films i've ever seen 
imagine a race ahead meets videodrome that's what this film's like it is absolutely batshit crazy uh very experimental very uh industrial um what's the word i'm looking for here it's very body horror that's what i'm going for so yeah it's the real surreal sim uh, imagery of like a razor head meets the body horror of like david cronenberg that's what i'm trying to go for here and it's incredible i think it's only like an hour long uh, 67 minutes long so really really quick watch kotoko again from sukamoto tokyo fist from sukamoto this is a crazy film about boxing that's just absolutely crazy this guy is just on another level i love this guy's stuff snake of june again from sukamoto really really love it i really wish i could get my hands on that arrow video release of these films um but i think it was only a us release so and it's out of print now i believe hanabi from takeshi katano cold fish love exposure this is meant to be absolutely incredible but the run times put me off from watching it recently it's 237 minutes long uh, a scene at the sea love another cult this is a film i'm probably going to part with because although it was fine i didn't hate the film um it, it didn't leave me wanting to rewatch it and uh, yeah one one viewing was enough for me and then anti-porno which isn't what you think it is <laughs> it's a very very interesting film by sion sano and uh yeah really really good stuff that one here we have a bunch of my artificial eye releases um we have uh, satan tango this is a film i've been dying to watch for so long but the film is 432 minutes long now that is ridiculous uh i think it's like just seven over seven hours long and there have actually been screenings of it being shown in one day so you have like um morning breaks and you get you have like an hour off for your lunch and stuff and then you come back in the afternoon and watch another three hours of the film it's crazy i mean that'd be a pretty cool day of uh, cool day out to watch that as long as you enjoy it i guess you not feel like you wasted your time this isn't actually mine this is a, something i'm borrowing from a friend this is a devo live um sort of music uh blu-ray the handmaiden incredible film by park chang wook uh yeah this is a great addition Hidden, I got this for Christmas. It's a Marco Heineke film, not seen that one yet. Uh, the Killing of a Sacred Deer, great, great film from Yorgos Lathamos, one of my favorite sort of uh, contemporary filmmakers. Portrait of a Lady on Fire, I need to, I need to part with this because I've got the Criterion edition now. Melancholia, really interesting film from Lars von Trier. A Separation, great Iranian film. Exotica. Now this is a great, great film. I hope the Criterion sort of put a spotlight on Aton Egoman, Egoyan's uh, filmography at some point in the future. He's a really interesting voice that I'm not sure enough people are aware of, but this film is incredible. Blue is the warmest colour. The Duke of Burgundy. Uh, Nymphomaniac, one, uh, volume one and two from Lars von Trier. Uh, Clouds of Maria, Sills Maria, I should say, Olivia Assayas film. Really solid performance from Kristen Stewart in this. Like, uh, this film made me realise that she actually has some really good acting jobs. The House That Jack Built, really controversial uh, film from uh, Lars von Trier, of, all, of course. Uh, the Great Beauty, not watched this one yet, but heard it's really good. Breaking the Waves, another Lars von Trier film. The White Ribbon, still not watched this one yet from Mikhail Haneke, but look forward to that one. A Sacrifice, Andrei Tarkovsky. Oh, he's he's one of the best of all time. Incredible stuff. And then last but not least, we have a bunch of films from Second Sight and Severin here. So we have, uh, except from that, we have a Tale of Two Sisters, which I picked up to um, uh, for my film studies class which is uh, absolutely creepy really really good film and then we have the beyond from beyond as i say it's a hp lovecraft adaptation really good stuff this is going to be really annoying now isn't it reanimator picnic at hanging rock really really good uh, australian production film from peter weir 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre, one of my all-time favorite horror films. Really, really, really love this film. Uh, Romance, Strange, Vi Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, incredible um, giallo film um, from Severin, starring Edward Bennett, who I'm a really big fan of. Uh, Blood and Flesh, this is an incredible documentary about the life of Al Adamson, who was like an exploitation horror filmmaker in the 60s and 70s. And so this documentary is like half following his career uh, as a director and then the second half is like a true crime documentary about his death and how it basically is very much like something out of a film it's this crazy but it's really really good really good stuff she killed an ecstasy by jess franco still need to watch this one but uh yep all the colors of the dark not my favorite um giallo film uh, interesting enough, it's got Edward Fennec in it again, which is always a plus, but yeah, this one didn't really strike me, um, which is a shame because Sergio Martino's made some fantastic films in his career, but yeah, this might be one I part with at some point. Hot Nights of Linda, this is terrible, <laughs> Jess Franco film. Shining Sex, again, this is pretty, pretty terrible film, uh, didn't really enjoy this one, I just got these out of curiosity from Severin. Not seen Bahia Blanca. I've heard this is a better Jess Franco film. This is a really good Jess Franco film. Vampiros Lesbos. Um, very tasteful, like erotic type film. Really, really, really good. And then this is like a documentary. That's sexploitation about the history of um, sexploitation films and stuff. So it's more of an education thing there. And lastly, I almost forgot to include this bit in the video collection, is my... A24 director's cut uh, 4k of uh, Midsommar which is incredible uh, my Ingmar Bergman cinema box set this contains like 30 of his films still only watched half of this but it's a pretty impressive set and then so just a few more box sets most of these which I haven't opened yet but got the the Ray Harryhausen volume 1 set I don't know what you did last summer trilogy from 88 films this is incredible the special edition uh eureka master cinema kwaidan incredible japanese sort of horror anthology film buster keaton uh, box sets and um, just finding the time to sit down to enjoy these ones mothra um godzilla is amazing but i've never seen mothra before so i'm excited to check that one out Colombia Noir number one. Noir films are just some of my favourite and surprised I haven't even actually opened this yet. It's just finding time. It's a part of why I want to sort of curate my collection because I'm, I'm buying more than I'm finding time to watch. And part of that is to do with fear of missing out some of the limited edition things. They're numbered so you don't want to miss them miss out on them but yeah i've got that bloody terror the norman warren set i've seen a bunch of these films before very interesting very uh interesting that new uh, indicator have actually put these out um it's more of like a vinegar syndrome type thing to be releasing but really really good hammer volume three i picked this up because i wanted to improve my knowledge of hammer films and um, we'll see how i get on with them but i'm um, not yet as open to this one this is the volume two of william castle really interesting director not open that one samuel fuller at columbia and then hammer volume two this is out of print now but yeah so that'll be it for the collection uh at least this is my boutique blu-ray stuff looking all the way up there um, and then the the um, the shelf that's beside me, I'll do in another video because this has killed my arm to actually record this um, video, and I've had to do it in chunks because uh, carrying this camera is quite tiring, and I get an out of breath talking and lifting and moving. So, uh, 